speech I give, election security is a big deal. Um, they don't, people don't want, one, they don't want, you know, illegals to vote. They don't want non-citizens to vote. They want to make sure there's no cheating because they, you know, they, want, they don't want their vote diluted. It, I mean, it's actually really simple. Um, we know that um, what Alabama, Virginia, and Texas have kicked 16,000 people off the voter rolls. We know that Texas said they were non-citizens. We know that Texas said that um, 2,000 of them had voted in prior elections. So we know this happens. And put it all in perspective, elections are won by a few votes. My election 18, um, ultimately I, was, I won by 10,000 votes. So I think anybody that's ever been through a close election um, is, uh, is really concerned that this, you know, we, we cannot uh, let any of our votes uh, be diluted. Uh, Democrats claim that we don't need to take additional action because non-citizens voting in federal elections is already illegal, which it is. If that logic, logic holds up, then why do we do IDs to buy alcohol? When it's already, if it's illegal, why do we, why do we have to do that? Um, why do police set up DUI checkpoints or watch for speeders if drunk driving speed is already illegal? It's illegal. So we do it because checks and balances work. Um, here's an even better question. Why do we have border patrol if crossing the border without documentation is already illegal? Because we know checks and balances work. We do these, these things because having laws without enforcement, as we all know, does not work. Uh, we've seen at the border is Biden and Harris, uh, more than 10 million people have crossed our border illegally. Now they seem to be perfectly fine with letting them vote in elections. That's wrong. No election, uh, no non-citizen should vote and elections have consequences and nobody wants their vote diluted. There are clearly loopholes that must be addressed. Current law doesn't require you to submit proof of citizenship when registering to vote. Just all you have to do is, if you've seen the form, you just check a box. So non-citizens are on voter rolls. Uh, current law requires states to verify identity and residency of a voter with their license, but every state issues a driver's license to non-citizens and 19 states issue driver's license to illegal citizens, including Minnesota, where Governor Tim Walz signed the law allowing illegals to get driver's license. I actually can't believe that. How does that make any sense? So license alone is not enough. 22 states have same-day registration. A non-citizen could show up, register, register without proving citizenship, vote, and have it counted in our elections. That's wrong. So ask yourself, why does Chuck Schumer, why is he so afraid of the SAVE Act? Why does he not put, up, put this up for a vote? The House has already passed this. Um, doesn't have to be attached to the CR. Just why doesn't he, why doesn't he put it up? The answer is simple. Harris, Schumer, Democrats, they intentionally opened the border and allowed people to come here illegally so they get to vote in our elections. They think that's going to help them win. They can't win on their policies because people, if you do any poll, you look at the Democrats' policies, Democrats would lose. Uh, I've been in tight elections. Uh, all, basically, all my elections are tight. I hope this year it's not so tight. Um, and every vote matters. Um, we have to make sure we ensure that there's actually zero fraud. Not, I mean, they, we, we've had races um, in Florida that have been won by less than 20 votes um, while I was governor. So uh, every, every vote matters, and non-citizens should never vote. So it's very important that we, uh, we get this passed. Uh, whether we get this passed as part of the uh, CR or we get this passed uh, separately, we ought to get it done. Uh, now the spots for the bill, Senator Mike Lee. Thanks so much, Rick. Uh, look, um, no corporation would hold a shareholder vote in which non-shareholders were allowed to vote. When you board a plane, when you get a marriage license, a hunting or a fishing license, you pick up a prescription, you go to the doctor, you do all sorts of things that Americans do every day. You're required to show a form of ID. It does a couple of things. It allows you to prove who you are because proving who you are, identifying who you are, may determine whether or not you're available to do, you're, you're eligible to do that thing. Whether or not you're the person uh, whose name is on that prescription. Uh, whether or not you're the same person whose name is on the airplane ticket. You have to prove that. It would be insane for us not to have any similar requirement uh, attached to one of our most fundamental activities in our Republican democracy, which is the right to vote. Um, you look at almost every country worldwide, they require some sort of identification in order to do that. Now, what we're talking about here is the identification required 
in order to cast a vote in a federal election, we as a federal lawmaking body typically don't have authority over state and local elections, but we do have some authority over federal elections. An existing federal law prohibits non-citizen voting. A lot of people, as Rick Scott mentioned, think that's the end of the inquiry. That's no more the end of the inquiry than it would be to say, well, it's already illegal to kill somebody uh, with a gun, therefore we don't need any laws whatsoever regarding, uh, you know, I don't know, your ability to prove your age and identity, identity and your uh, status as a non-felon before buying a gun. That's absurd. Current federal law is made almost impossible to enforce on this front. In other words, when we look at that law, the existing federal law that says you may not as a non-citizen vote in a federal election, it's been made very, very difficult by a couple of factors. Number one, in passage in 1993 of the National Voter Registration Act, which allows people uh, in, in all states, in fact requires states, uh, when you go in to apply for a driver's license uh, uh, to be offered up a form, would you like to register to vote? And once that happens, you fill that out. And by checking a box and signing your name, you can in one fell swoop apply for a driver's license and register to vote in federal elections. In all 50 states plus the District of Columbia, you can get a driver's license even if you are a non-citizen. In 19 states, you are able to get a driver's license even if you are an illegal alien. So in all those circumstances, when you apply for the driver's license, by checking a box and signing your name, you can register to vote. This is exactly why some of these states that have looked at it, like Texas, have found 6,500 uh, non-citizens just through their initial review of some of their voter registration files. I don't even know if they went through all of them. 6,500 non-citizens who were registered to vote, known non-citizens. <coughs> of those, nearly a third, 1,930, had previously voted in one or more elections. So this is simply false to say because it's illegal, it can't happen, and in fact, it doesn't happen. That is not true. Now, the need for this is made even more pronounced when you consider the impact of a Supreme Court ruling just a few years ago. A majority opinion issued by Chief Justice John Roberts uh, in, a, in a case dealing with an Arizona policy concluded, wrongly in my view, that the 1993 National Voter Registration Act actually precludes the state from asking for any kind of proof of citizenship, even if they know or suspect that the person is a non-citizen that they cannot ask for anything else. So this is intended to plug that hole. There's an additional consideration here that makes this especially timely, especially necessary now. More than at any other time in American history that I'm familiar with, we have a very large number of non-citizens in this country, an estimated 30 million or so. Of those, we know that we've got at least 10 million or so who have entered illegally into the United States in the last three and a half years alone. Now, with something approaching 10% of our nation's population consisting of non-citizens, coupled with the Supreme Court ruling, wrongly in my view, interpreting, but interpreting nonetheless, the National Voter Registration Act as precluding the states from asking for that, coupled with the fact that in all 50 states plus D.C., a non-citizen can easily apply for uh, registering to vote while getting a driver's license and the fact that the state can't ask anything beyond that. The SAVE Act is absolutely necessary. Look, um, we all know that elections, including and especially presidential elections, tend to be decided within uh, a pretty narrow range. In fact, within a few states and very often within just a few counties nationwide. And uh, it, it would be folly for us to leave open this vulnerability. Now, there are those, finally, who will make the argument against this. That this is uh, unnecessary for the additional reason that it's too late for it to do any good. Absolute, utter, nonsense, science fiction, fantasy. That is not true that it would do no good. Uh, let me explain briefly why. In 22 states, so nearly half of all voting jurisdictions in America, you are allowed to register to vote up to and including Election Day, same-day voter registration. Therefore, there are a number of people who may not have uh, uh, applied to register to vote so far under the NVRA who could do so up to and including the day of the election. In addition to those 22 states, uh, uh, many other states allow voter registration to continue up until some moment prior to election day. 
And finally, uh, this bill has within it a criminal penalty that is uh, that would attach to anyone who knowingly registers a non-citizen to vote in a federal election. The combined deterrent effects of these makes this bill not only helpful but eminently necessary. And the reason we need to attach this to the spending bill has everything to do with the fact that this is the last train leaving the station between now and Election Day. If Americans are going to remain in control of their own government, for heaven's sakes, we should let only Americans vote in our elections. Thank you. Uh, Ron Johnson, you're up next. Well, first of all, I want to thank Senator Scott for leading this conference and for Senator Lee for leading on this bill. Uh, he's provided a pretty complete explanation of why I think this, this is necessary. Yeah, I, I just wrote a uh, column for the Federalist uh, last week where, where I kind of laid out you know, certainly my rationale, but, but I also tried to debunk you know, so much of what we hear from Democrats, from the mainstream media, that you know, our elections are perfect and these things are totally secure. It's simply not true. Um, there, there's one side of the political spectrum that does want to make it easy to vote, um, but wants total election integrity. There's another side that wants to make it easy to cheat, and I think you know who that is. Uh, one of the things I point out in the column, for example, in Wisconsin, is much as we're told that 2020 was the most secure election in our history, that's not true. In, in, in Wisconsin, we had 170 absentee ballots, and I'll, I'll be charitable here, they were improperly cured by election clerks. That's not allowed by Wisconsin law. Now, the Supreme Court didn't want to you know, remedy that, because the, the, the remedy was almost unthinkable, tossing out 170,000 votes. So that improper action stood. We had Zuckerbucks and, you know, pay for people that pretty well took over the Green Bay election system to the point where they put so much stress on the, on the election clerk, she resigned, and then their political hacks took over the election system for the 2020 election in Green Bay. We had something called balloting in the park, completely illegal in Wisconsin, and yet 117,000 ballots were harvested during that event. We, we had seniors voting without the proper supervision by election helpers. So there, there were so many things indisputable in Wisconsin where it was a very close election. And, and for anybody to say that illegal immigrants can't vote or you know, non-citizens can't vote. It can't happen. It's, it's, we know that they do. In my column, I point out, for example, Mike talked about Texas. Virginia just recently purged over 6,300 non-citizens from their voter files. They, they did it by comparing DMV records with their election system. Again, 6,300. Uh, in, in Boston, 70 individuals requested to have their names taken off the rolls. I'm sure that they don't want their immigration benefits impacted. In, in Ohio, where they went through a multi-phase audit, 499 non-citizens were taken off the rolls. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg. When you have the Biden administration with the executive order telling their federal agencies, possibly unlawfully, to register voters. Anybody think that the Biden administration is going to register voters in a nonpartisan way? And I'll just stand on, on this note. I mean, I can think of no other reason that a president of the United States, a, a, a vice president who's the border czar, Democrats in Congress would support and promote and facilitate an open border that is a clear and present danger to this country. The rapes, the murders, now that the Venezuelan gangs taking over apartment cities laying the seed for taking over communities like the cartels do in Mexico. This is unbelievably dangerous. Why would you, as a responsible elected official, do that? I can think of no other reason than to bring in a bunch of people very grateful to you and encourage them and facilitate their ability to vote unlawfully. That's the reality of the situation. It's an awful reality, which is why, in the end, we should do everything we can to pass the SAVE Act to at least mitigate that harm. And I guess next, Senator Marshall. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Senator Johnson, and good afternoon, everybody. Is there anything more vital to the survival and success of our democracy, to our republic, than election integrity? 
I would argue there isn't. Doesn't it make more sense that the people voting for the representatives or their president, that they should be citizens of the country? And of course, oh, by the way, that is the law of the land. But let's put some teeth to it to make sure that truly happens. Today across America, you can't get through a day without your ID. You can't hop on an airplane. You can't uh, get a hotel room. You can't open a bank account without a valid ID. Doesn't an, the election process, if you could put a value on getting a hotel room or opening a bank account versus the value of being able to vote in this country, isn't that vote, the integrity of the election, have more value than any of those other processes? But astonishingly, astonishingly, our friends across the aisle are prepared to shut down the government to prevent proper identification to vote or for proof of citizenship to register to vote. Now, American citizens all had the same question. What are the Democrats afraid of? Indeed, they, the Democrats, are jeopardizing the integrity of our elections. They are the threat to democracy. And again, we ask why? Why do they want this, uh, this bar to be so low to vote or register? It's because they've spent years courting millions of illegal immigrants that they've ushered across the borders in hopes of swinging a few tight elections in key states. There are those who say that this isn't necessary, but states like Texas and Virginia have found thousands of ineligible voters, including a significant number of non-citizens on their current voter rolls, proving this is a real threat to our democracy. Our elections, especially in battleground states, can hinge on a few thousand votes. Protecting the integrity of our system by requiring proof of citizenship isn't controversial, it's actually common sense. Just as we have laws to prevent speeding, we need laws to prevent illegal voting. Passing the SAVE Act is the right thing to do to protect this democracy. And Coach Tuberville's up. Thank you. This is, uh, you know, I'm new here. I'm amazed. Our job is to protect the Constitution and give the citizens of this country a fair election and spend their money properly. I'm appalled of what we do up here. Absolutely appalled. It's, uh, you can go down to the library, and you, in this city you can't find a Webster Dictionary that defines common sense. It's not here. Not here anywhere you can find it. And American people should be sick at their stomach of what's going on. You just heard my colleagues talk about this, and I want to thank Senator Lee for authoring this bill, along with Congressman Chip Roy over in the House, carrying the water for it over there. This is a no-brainer. Absolutely no brainer. We all know and have understood the last three and a half years why the Democrats have had open borders. It cost us tens of millions of dollars monthly when we couldn't come up with $5 billion for a border wall when President Trump was in office. Too much money. It's all a scam, like this whole place up there. It's a scam. The Democrats have taken advantage of every opportunity they could get. It's really scary, to be honest with you. Now, I went to 10 or 15 states in August, helping other senators get elected and raising money. And they'd come up to me and go, Coach, they wouldn't talk about, ask about the economy or the border or foreign wars or crime on the streets. It was almost unanimous. Are we going to have fair elections? And I could not look them in the face and say, yes, we are. Because if we continue down this path, it's going to be the same old thing. And the American people deserve better than this. People that pay our bills and our, our salaries up here deserve better than this. The Democrats know better than this, but they want power so bad that they're going to try to tear down our election system. And I'm going to tell you this. My first day was January the 6th in 2021. And what's going to happen if we do not show the American people that the elections are going to be fair and they're going to be satisfied with the outcome, no matter whether Republicans win or Democrats win, you are going to have hell to pay in this country. It's coming. And I'm not so sure that's not what the Democrats want. It's an embarrassing situation for me as a taxpaying American citizen 
for the last 35, 40 years, it's embarrassing to know that we have less control over our election system than we have on anything else. And that's all American taxpayers and the citizens want in this country. They want to know that their vote counts and that whatever happens in November, that they feel good about it, whatever happens. But you know what? That's not going to be what's going to happen. You're going to have problems, and it's because the Democrats will not bring this bill to the floor, pass it, and tell the American people, we're with you, we're going to have fair elections no matter what happens, and we're going to be able to put our head on the pillow at night and know that nothing's going to happen the next day or the next week, and we're going to go and, and make this country better. Democrats ought to be ashamed. Chuck Schumer ought to be ashamed. The Senate needs to get a backbone, bring this to the floor, and let's pass it, and let's get a budget, and let's get a bill passed to make elections fair. We can answer any questions anybody has. Yes. So, um, Congressman Cory Mills is one of the members in the House who he signed on to the SAVE Act, but he doesn't support this strategy of attaching it to the CR because he says at this point, 55 days out from the election, there's not even enough time to actually implement this before the November election. How do you respond to yep. that? He, he's wrong in several respects. Number one, it takes effect immediately after becoming law. So let's say if we were to get it passed in the next uh, week, two weeks, uh, is roughly what we've got between now and the end of the month, it takes effect immediately. By taking effect immediately, it does a couple of things. First and foremost, it provides a significant deterrent to anyone registering uh, from that moment forward uh, uh, any non-citizen to vote. If they do so knowingly, then they risk, uh, you know, committing a felony offense independently of any voter action. Um, secondly, one of the reasons why that's significant is because, as I mentioned earlier, there are 22 states that have same-day voter registration, uh, uh, up to and including Election Day. So that's nearly half the states in the country uh, in which this could have a significant impact. We don't know exactly how many non-citizens there might be out there who have previously registered. Uh, and we don't know exactly how many have not yet registered but might be doing so at some point between now and Election Day. But we do know that there is lag time between now and Election Day and that some of those could register to vote and vote between now and Election Day, especially in those 22 states. To say nothing of the other states, that while not allowing uh, same-day voter registration on Election Day, uh, uh, allow it up, and, uh, up until some late date prior to the election. So uh, have great respect for Representative Mills. Uh, I look forward to talking to him personally about this. I've uh, been trying to reach out to him uh, on that per, uh, uh, issue in particular. We haven't yet connected, but I look forward to explaining that to him. He's, he's been uh, misinformed on that front. This would make a difference. It would make a big difference. And all of this begs the question, if, as many Democrats are saying, and unfortunately some Republicans, if this is unnecessary, why oppose it? What's the worst that can happen? If this really isn't a problem, if this really would do no good, why do you oppose it? And why would you oppose attaching it to a spending bill? Why worry about that? It worries me greatly that some are obsessively worried about it, and we need to ask why. Yes. Well, first off, we're going to see what the House does. Um, hopefully, they'll hopefully it'll get passed out of the House and it'll come over here, and and, and then we'll we'll have a vote on it. Uh, but the right thing to do is she ought to bring it up. If, you know, look, I, I think it ought to be part of the CR, but just bring it up by itself. The bill's been, already passed the House. Just bring it up by itself and get it behind us. Yes. Do you support shutting down the government over this issue? Of course not. There's nobody up here that wants to shut down the government. No, I don't know one person, no, I don't know a Republican in the country that wants to shut down the government. Um, Senator, after the debate last night, sticking to immigration, a lot of chatter online has been about the whole idea that Haitian immigrants are eating pets. So my question to you three, one, is do you believe that is happening? And two, given that immigration is an issue that Republicans consistently outpull Democrats on, was that the right strategy to bring on the debate stage yesterday? Well, I, I read some of the articles about Springfield, Ohio, so I have no idea what's happening there just other than what I've read. So I have no idea. I know in Florida we have a big Haitian community, uh, and they're hardworking people. They're uh, business owners. They're um, 
Um, they go to church. I, I spend a lot of time going to Haitian churches, and so it's a wonderful group of people. Um, but what begs the question is we're, we only have this issue because the border is open. We would be having this conversation if the border was open. Harris and Biden intentionally opened the border, and that's why we're even having these issues. So, you know, every candidate has an opportunity to decide how they're going to do their debates. But uh, I, can, I can just tell you we're only having this conversation because the border is open. So let, let me quick take a crack at this. Um, it doesn't surprise me, but it's absurd that this is the question we've been asked in the hallways. Uh, we have been asked by the media about the rapes and the murders and all the migrant crimes that are being created by this. Okay, we're not being asked about that. This, this is what the press is fixated on. The, the fact of the matter is, is we have an enormous problem in this nation because of, of the Democrats' open border process. Again, it's a clear and present danger as I described previously. What Senator Lee is trying to accomplish with this bill that he introduced in the Senate is what should be completely Bipartisan, nonpartisan. You know, every American, as Senator Tuberville was talking about, it, every American should have confidence in the result of the election. There's, there's nothing partisan about that. The fact that in 2016, half America, half America didn't acknowledge that as a legitimate result. Fast forward to 2020, the other half of America is not accepting that as a result. Now, the election deniers from 2016, not a problem. Deny it all you want. 2020, the stand of the Republic, okay? It's an unsustainable state of affairs. So all we're trying to do is what I think the vast majority of Americans want. I mean, 80% support voter ID because they only want people eligible to vote to vote. So again, it's, it's absurd to be focusing on one issue as it comes to migrant issues as opposed to ignoring Again, the rapes, the murders, the, the Venezuelan gangs taking over apartment complexes, you know, all, all of a sudden lawless sections in, in different parts of our states. This, this is a huge concern. We're only seeing the tip of the iceberg of this, and we're going to be living with the negative consequences of Biden and Harris's open border for decades. This issue into the debate yesterday. He could have talked about all of those issues as well. So the reason well, we're and, asking this and he and he did, and all you're focusing is on this. But okay. Again, I think we've all seen the reports. I can't verify all of them. We've seen the reports, but the main point are the rapes, the murders, the clear and present danger that the Biden Harris open border policy is creating for this country. But you know, I, I can just tell you, I'll, you know, um, I try. I've, I've, I've done every county in my state. And I can't think of many speeches I've given when I, you know, where they didn't ask me about election security. I mean, they were, people are really mad. People are scared to death about, and, and think about when I grew up, no one worried about whether it was going to be a free and fair election, whether it was or not. It, we didn't think that way. People really believe these elections are unfair. How is that good for us? Whether, whether Republican win or Democrat win, it's, it, you know, it's not good for the country. So we ought to, every Republican, every Democrat ought to do everything, everything they can to make people feel more comfortable that these elections are fair. It, it just, it makes no sense not to. Like, I, I went through, I, th I went through a recount, uh, two or three recounts, I think it was, in 2018. The Democrats tried to steal the election. I won. I won by 57,000 votes, right? They tried to steal the election. Create ballots after election night. They did everything. It was completely illegal what they did. What they did. And I can just tell you how many people say they said, just like my daughter, she said, look, I want you to win, but it makes me mad when they either are going to steal an election. That's going on all across the country right now. We need to wake up and understand that people are scared that they, this country is going away, not because of how the public votes, but because of how non-citizens vote. Yes. Well, I, I think what he's saying is, is well, you can ask him what he's saying. I don't know anybody that wants to shut down government. Now, I think what we'd all like to do is have a responsible government. I mean, balance. I mean, do do this the logical stuff. I balanced the budget when I was governor. I mean, you know, we, we don't we don't go waste money. We I think I think the numbers are we are spending 40 percent more than we take in now. That is not sustainable. You can't keep doing that. 
I mean, you have, we have to understand this cannot last what we're doing. We have a hundred, think about this, we have a hundred million people, working age, not working in this country. Tell me how that's sustainable. Any of you, did any of your parents, or if you have kids, are you telling your kids you don't want them to work? That's what your government is doing. So they, people aren't working. We're spending more money than we take in. People are worried about our elections. This is a problem. We've got to start solving these problems. Thanks, everybody. Thank